On a completely different topic, but somehow related, senators spend a lot of time in airports, in airplanes, even in COVID-19 times. Presiding officer knows that well. And I spend most of my time in a handful of airports. O'Hare, I know inside and out. I can take you on a tour wherever, whenever you'd like to go. Springfield, my hometown airport's a small undertaking. Reagan National Airport here, I'm familiar with it as well. But I always thought to myself as I traveled years ago that one of the worst airports in America, sadly, was LaGuardia. Oh, what a wreck. LaGuardia was just way underutilized and lacked all the modern developments we expect in an airport. But lo and behold, that has all changed. LaGuardia is virtually finished now, but it's magnificent and beautiful and has things in it many airports would only aspire to have, as it should, because it's not only serving a great city, but is also named after a great man, Fiorello LaGuardia. Fiorello LaGuardia stood five foot two, but he was a giant among American politicians. He called himself a Roosevelt Republican, by which he meant not just Teddy, but FDR too. Well, especially FDR. As mayor of New York City during the Great Depression and World War II, Fiorello LaGuardia took on political corruption and organized crime. He did some things which are still talked about. When the newspaper workers went on strike, he went on the radio on Sunday morning in New York and read the funnies to the kids so they could keep up with them. But he did something that lives on today. He oversaw an unprecedented investment in public works, including construction of new highways, roads, bridges, tunnels, investments that changed the physical landscape of America's largest city. Fiorello LaGuardia famously said, and I quote, there's no Democrat or Republican way to fix a pothole. He understood that, stood that when it comes to the most basic responsibilities of government, political labels shouldn't matter. Building and maintaining roads and bridges helps all of us. Well, I think Mayor Fiorello LaGuardia would be pleased that last week this Senate came together to do a whole lot more than fix a pothole. We've created a blueprint for America's economic future. Against the odds, we now have before us a bipartisan plan to build the physical backbone of the 21st century American economy. In these times when there's so much political disagreement, just getting this far is a remarkable achievement. I look forward to a productive debate and hopefully a vote this week. I'm hopeful we can meet the deadline because the fact is America can't wait any longer for this Senate to take our action. Our roads and bridges are crumbling beneath our feet. Last week on the floor I brought a photo of a bridge that had collapsed two weeks ago in a small rural town in Illinois known as Seneca. A man was driving his pickup truck across the bridge when the pavement crumbled and the bridge split in two. The photo showed his red pickup truck precariously straddling the two halves of the broken bridge. If the gap had been a few inches wider, that driver and his truck would have plunged into the water below. Luckily for him, there were a lot of good Samaritans, good Illinoisans, who came to his rescue. That could happen to any of us any day. More than 47,000 American bridges are judged to be structurally deficient, including 2,000 in my state of Illinois. The legislation we're voting on this week will start to repair them. It includes the largest investment in American bridges since the creation of the interstate highway system. Imagine that. It also includes the largest investment in clean water infrastructure ever. Do we need it? Well, think of Flint, Michigan, and think of the story today in the Chicago papers about the discovery of PFAS comp contamination in water supplies across my state. That isn't all. We can also replace the old lead service lines that poison drinking water. Remember, so many homes and businesses and schools and churches are served by lead pipe service lines. There is no acceptable, tolerable limit of lead in drinking water, zero, and it's a fact. I want to thank my colleague, Tammy Duckworth. She's been a real leader on this issue. And I think all of us owe her a debt of gratitude that it's included in this legislation. Chicago has more miles of lead water pipes than any city in America. I'm not bragging. I'm just stating facts. 
But Chicago isn't alone. These lead pipes are in big cities and small towns all across the nation. And listen, this bipartisan plan includes the largest investment in passenger rail since the creation of Amtrak in the 1960s. You know President Joe Biden would not forget Amtrak, nor Tom Carper from the state of Delaware, nor Chris Coons, nor any of us who are blessed by having Amtrak service. It's also the largest investment in public transit in American history. I was just out at a ribbon cutting, well, several of them, uh, recently in Chicago. Naturally, people were not riding the CTA and Metro and other rail uh, opportunities as they once did because of the COVID-19, but it's coming back. And we want to make sure those stations are safe and make sure they're accessible for people with disability. With this bill in my state, the Chicago Transit Authority and other public transportation agencies in Chicago and downstate will be able to buy new, more efficient buses and rail cars, modernize tracks and stations, and make those stations accessible. It will also support badly needed capital projects, modernizing the CTA's red and purple lines, expanding the capacity of the blue line at O'Hare, completing the red line south extension, which has been a dream and aspiration for decades. This package also includes $25 billion to modernize Illinois airports, including money for O'Hare's terminal expansion. Believe me, we can use it. We've done a lot with the runways, magnificent investments there. Now we've got to make sure the terminals keep up with that modernization. Remember the cargo ship that ran through, ran aground rather, at the Suez Canal earlier this year, causing major delays worldwide in shipping, costing companies and ultimately customers millions of dollars? Well, this infrastructure plan will keep America's economy moving and our shipping lanes open by modernizing our ports, locks, and dams. We're not just repairing old infrastructure, we're building new to solve today's problems and meet the challenges ahead. This plan includes the largest investment in clean energy transmission infrastructure in America's history. If there was ever a moment in time with the world literally, literally burning up for us to get serious about climate change, this is that moment, and this investment responds to it. In America, the biggest source of greenhouse gases is transportation. We can change it. This plan is a start. In the town of Normal, Illinois, yes, there is a Normal, Illinois, a company called Rivian bought an old abandoned Mitsubishi automobile factory five years ago. They now have started production on electric cars and delivery vans. The car is the future. Is this going to go anywhere? Does anybody believe in electric vehicles? Well, 15% of Rivian is owned by Ford Motor Company. And if you've heard of a company called Amazon, they invested a billion dollars in Rivian. They've ordered 120,000 delivery vans. There are 2,000 people working there now, twice the number that were working when Mitsubishi left. They aspire to double that number again and to make production really accessible all across the country. That's not the only uh, story I could tell about electric vehicles. Illinois is uh, in a position to really be a national leader. Um, we're lucky too, I might add, that the Argonne National Laboratory in Chicago, in the Ch Chicagoland area, has really led American research in battery technology and recycling batteries. That is the future. And if you don't believe me, just watch the ads on television where they're advertising the new Ford F-150 Lightning, an electric truck. They don't have any available now, but they invite you to sign up to buy one next year. With this plan, we can build a network of electric vehicle charging stations where drivers can charge their cars for a fraction of what it costs to fill a gas tank today and without the harmful emissions. It really is the future that we are trying to assist with this important infrastructure bill. Importantly, this plan will help connect every American to reliable high-speed internet. <clears throat> they asked people, over 60% of the American people said that access to high-speed internet was as important as electricity to them. And some said even water. It's become that integral to a successful life or business. No matter where you live, the internet puts the world at your fingertips. Your children can learn from home. You can connect to healthcare providers when you need them. And businesses can reach a global marketplace. One last point. 
This plan will help us protect America's infrastructure, our economy, and American families from 21st century threats of climate change, extreme weather, and cyber attacks. It's the largest investment in resilience of physical and natural systems in American history. With this plan, we can create thousands of good-paying, family-supporting jobs, and the majority of these jobs may not require a college degree. Perhaps that two extra years of community college, which we hope to include in the next bill, will be just what a person needs to get a good-paying job, settle down, raise a family, the American dream. And we can lay the foundation for a long-term economic boom if everyone pulls together. These are smart, prudent, necessary investments that'll pay dividends for years to come. I want to thank the president. He was really all in in the negotiation of this bill. Without his leadership, we wouldn't be here. But I also want to thank the bipartisan group of senators who worked with the White House to produce this agreement. I've come to know them. I've participated in some of their early meetings and listened to them through the deliberation. There were times when I wanted to wring their necks and there were times when I wanted to pat their backs. But they never quit trying, and today we have a bill before us that is a dramatic achievement. And it's a bipartisan achievement. I think the number was 17 of the Republicans who voted for us to move forward on this debate. I hope those 17 can hold together with the Democrats to see this bill to its successful conclusion. Remember Fiorello LaGuardia's statement, it is no Democratic or Republican way to fill a pothole. We need to build the rest of the infrastructure that's the backbone of this American economy. But this is the right start. This bipartisan plan hits the sweet spot. I thank our many Republican colleagues who have joined with the Democrats to advance this debate. Isn't that what America has been waiting for? I yield the floor.